I'm Nils. In this video, I'll be talking about a way to maintain high NAD levels by using a natural compound known as apigenin. First, a reminder that this video is intended solely for informational purposes. It's not meant to be taken as and should not be construed as medical advice. NAD is essential to DNA repair and the proper functioning of our mitochondria. NAD levels are high when we're young, but they decline precipitously as we get older. So many people are experimenting with raising their NAD levels in the hope of adding some healthy years or decades to their lives. For those wanting to boost their NAD inexpensively, one little known NAD booster is apigenin found in many foods. At least one company is selling an NAD boosting supplement, which includes dried parsley as a key ingredient. There is evidence that taking them does increase NAD levels significantly in the blood and in the cells. By contrast, apigenin works by lowering our levels of CD38, an enzyme which degrades NAD in the body. CD38 enzymes tend to build up in the body as we're getting older and are likely one of the reasons we have such low NAD levels in our later years. So one strategy for people wanting to explore the benefits of high NAD levels could be to first raise their NAD levels by taking NMN, NR, or NA, niacin, nicotinic acid, or by doing things such as exercise, fasting, or cold showers, which also raise NAD. Then take a source of apigenin to keep the NAD being produced from being degraded by CD38. In addition to keeping NAD levels high, apigenin has also been shown to be anti-carcinogenic and appears to be effective in slowing the spread of some types of cancer, including breast and prostate cancer. It is also an effective anti-inflammatory. This brings us to a question which is, should we only take apigenin and skip the other NAD boosters? In my opinion and my experience, it's good to do both. It's good to take NAD boosters such as NMN, NR, or niacin, along with sirtuin activators such as resveratrol, terastilbene, and oils high in oleic acid such as olive oil and avocado oil. Personally, I take one or more grams of NMN in the mornings and I take 500 milligrams of niacin most nights as an NAD booster and sleep aid. Supplements such as these are important, again, in my estimation, because they provide the raw materials that your body can use to make NAD. If the raw materials aren't there, you might not be able to make it. But there can then be the problem that I've talked about above with CD38 destroying the NAD. This is where apigenin helps out. So in my understanding, in my estimation, it's important to be doing both. I think of apigenin as an insurance policy to make sure that you don't lose the benefits of your investment in other NAD boosting supplements. Sources of apigenin. Dried parsley is the richest natural source of apigenin. It has 137.7 milligrams per gram or 13,770 milligrams per 100 grams according to a study I've posted a link to below. It's about 12 times higher in apigenin than fresh parsley, which has about 13 to 15 milligrams per gram. Using the dry weight estimate of 4.2 grams equaling a teaspoon, one teaspoon of organic dried parsley would give you 575 milligrams of apigenin. Fresh parsley would give you about 59 milligrams. You can buy apigenin as a supplement. It's very affordable, about 10 cents for a 50 milligram capsule. But it's far more economical to just use dried parsley, which has 575 milligrams in a single teaspoon for the same price. 
There is also some epigenin in other plant products, including cilantro, celery, grapefruit, and chamomile tea. Heat destroys epigenin. If you're cooking with parsley as a strategy for optimizing your epigenin levels, just remember, don't overcook it. Lower the heat, then add in the parsley in the last minute or so of cooking, since epigenin can be destroyed by heat. For those looking for a beverage that provides a lot of epigenin, one possibility would be making your own parsley tea. Just steep parsley in hot water for a few minutes, then strain and drink. I would not use boiling water, though, or you could destroy the epigenin. I often start with a green drink made from celery and parsley to increase the epigenin levels. I've been adding a tablespoon of parsley to each bottle before drinking it. I also add in a little Redmond Real Salt to increase the healthy mineral content. My experience. This is purely anecdotal, but as I was typing this, I remembered that I had noticed years ago that I could remedy the effects of eating a high sugar meal, such as a piece of cake or a dish of ice cream, by eating a large amount of parsley right afterward. When I didn't eat the parsley, I'd get a burst of energy after eating all the sugar. I'd feel hyped up for a few minutes, but then I'd crash, probably because of a strong insulin response. I would sometimes have to even lie down for a few hours to recover. Eating parsley after a sugary meal would level out my blood glucose and prevent the crash, and I could skip the afternoon nap. I learned later that I felt better and functioned better if I cut sugar entirely out of my diet. More recently, I've noticed that if I drink a glass of juice fortified with dried parsley, then eat a bunch of fresh parsley, my eyesight will seem sharper for about a half hour afterward. These are, of course, just anecdotal experiences, not necessarily backed up by research, and they could be placebo effects. I'm currently taking two teaspoons of dried parsley a day, along with 1,000 milligrams of NMN, 500 milligrams of resveratrol, and sometimes 200 milligrams of terastilbene. I also take a dash of olive oil, another sirtuin gene activator, along with them. When I make scrambled eggs, I lower the heat, I add dried parsley, and I cook for another minute or so. When I'm not having eggs, I mix two teaspoons in a small glass of organic tomato juice or green juice and drink. One teaspoon has 575 milligrams of apigenin, according to the figures in the study I cited above, so I should be getting a little over a gram of apigenin. There's no way of knowing whether this is an ideal dose. It's an N equals 1 experiment. I'm experimenting on myself since parsley is G-R-A-S, generally recognized as safe. Please note that I am not recommending that anyone else take this much or even eat parsley at all. I'm just reporting what I've done and what I'm doing and my rationale. If you're pregnant or wanting to become pregnant soon, I would recommend that you read up on the possible negative effects of parsley. Like many plant-based products, including resveratrol and curcumin, apigenin is somewhat toxic, triggering a hormetic response in the body. This is actually what gives it its benefits. But as such, it's possible that large doses of apigenin could be toxic. It does appear to be so in mice. Women of childbearing age, again, may want to be aware of a possible connection between eating parsley and either deliberately or unintentionally ending a pregnancy. This video was sponsored by Do Not Age. If you look below the video, you'll find links to products on their website. Using the discount code PATHWAYS will give you a savings of 10% off. I hope you found this helpful. I would invite you to subscribe.